Hey everybody and welcome back to the StarCityGames.com Invitational. I'm here with Michael J. Flores. Hey, what's up? Uh, Mike, tell us about your legacy deck. This looks like a mess. Alright, so um, <laughs> I'm playing a hybrid uh, Cephalid Illusionist uh, Nomads on Core deck. So I'll let Jeremy go through the various cards just uh, once over and then we'll talk about how the deck works. So um, there's a baseline incentive to playing this deck, which is that it's just the fastest deck. So okay. unless, unless um, somebody's playing uh, Belcher and they get a perfect hand, there's mm -hmm. no deck that's faster than this deck. Okay. So just as a as a as a baseline, I can go first turn Nomads on Core or a really inter non-interactive play is first turn Shuko, right? Mm -hmm. So someone could, could theoretically like plow a Nomads on Core or Lightning Bolt Nomads on Core, just play a Shuko or a Nomads on Core on the first turn. In the second turn, you play a Cephalid Illusionist. Mm -hmm. So what happens is either Nomads on Core or Shuko have zero mana activated abilities that allow them to um, target Cephal Illusionist. Right. Cephal Illusionist has like a weird ability, but is actually like his side effect mm -hmm. from being an Odyssey block is that whenever he's targeted, you flip over the top three cards of your library. So what happens when you flip over the top three cards of your library? Well, you flip all these cards over, so in theory you can have your entire library can become your graveyard. Right. Okay? So in the process of doing that, you will flip over one or more copies of Narco Amoeba. You actually only need to flip over one copy of Narco Amoeba, but you can flip over as many as three. Okay. So if you have a really, really good draw, you can start off with Force of Will back up, so you can force like whatever their interaction is. But then you get... So let's just assume that, th that you flip over these Narco Amoebas and this is your board. You have um, Nomads on Core, Southfield Illusionist, and three Narco Amoebas in play. Okay. Now... And pretty much the rest of And the, the rest of these cards, cards are in my graveyard. In your graveyard, okay? yeah. Now, what I can do is I can spend the first two Narco Amoebas casting Cabal Therapy on my opponent for free. Mm -hmm. So I can get like, whatever interactive spell that he has in his hand, I can get them out of his hand for free. Now, I spend the next three creatures, I sacrifice these three creatures to Dread Return also for free, mm -hmm. and then I target the card, the Mimeoplasm. Okay. The so, Mimeoplasm from one of the Commander, from Commander decks, okay. right. So this Legal is one of the legacy, this is one of the awesome core innovations of, of this new version. There's multiple innovations that are going on, but this is one of the core innovations. Um, and what happens is when the Mimeoplasm comes into play, he can remove two creatures from a graveyard, and he becomes a copy of one of those creatures with an additional number of plus one plus one counters equal to the power of the other creature. Okay. So Mimeoplasm comes into play as a copy of Murderous Red Cap, mm -hmm. enhanced by Lord of Extinction. <laughs> now, when you have all your entire library in your graveyard, Lord of Extinction is very big. He's pretty, 50 pretty plus big. power. <laughs> so you have the Mimeoplasm coming into play as a copy of Murder Shred Cap with the size of Lord of Extinction. So the second turn, you're like, you know, bleh, Dread Return, take 50. Now, why is this really good? A, it's awesome to make your opponent take 50 damage yeah, on the second turn. I killed turn. you twice. You don't need to place a game two, right? right? Is that how that works? <laughs> so, uh, but. There's one thing. The other thing is like I lost. Uh, I lost a game at the the last time I played this kind of kind of deck. My opponent played a dueling grounds. So the previous version of this deck, you get out Kiki Jiki, uh, Karmic Karmic Guy, yeah. and then you keep on tapping Kiki Jiki, and then you like attack with a bunch of two two flyers in the air. So you can't actually get locked out by anything that stops the red zone if you just nug your opponent for fifty. Right. There's also weird stuff like my deck has Aether Vial, so I could actually just win games by just like viling out the Lord of Extinction and attacking people with a huge guy. Like, they're trying to play against your graveyard, and you're like, nah, he's gonna make a huge guy, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put equipment on it. Equipment, you say? So, <laughs> one of the things that I talked about earlier was that we can use Shuko as a proxy for Nomads on Core. Right. Okay? This is actually something, I think Yelger Wiegerspot played in the Grand Prix like five years ago when he played a similar deck to this. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm lucky enough to have one of my really good friends is Patrick Chapin, and Patrick Chapin's really smart at magic. I don't know if you knew yeah, that. So Patrick, the innovator, the innovator said, "Hey, wait a minute, Shuko mm -hmm. is an equipment. Who's friends with equipment? <laughs> Why? Squire. Squire is friends with equipment. So I took a deck that was already the fastest deck in the format and added the most unfair card. <laughs> So, and it's not just that I have the most unfair card, I have the uncounterable version of the most unfair card in the deck. <laughs> so, if people are like, oh, I have all kinds of ways I will fight against your graveyard, well, tell you what, brah, I'm going to get Batter Skull, and I will just defeat you with Batter Skull, okay? And I, you can, after the first turn, you can just never cast another spell with actual mans. You can just do stuff, and your opponent's like, oh, who, what the? <laughs> the other thing is, there, there's a, there's a card that's actually very good against this deck, which is Umazawa's Jide. If your uh -huh. opponent gets Umazawa's Jide on, online, it's hard to go off because 
they can just like put oh, minus just, one yeah, on uh, either of these guys and kill them before you can actually finish cycling through the time. I could just play my own Umazawa's today. This actually happens to be a legendary artifact, so F you. Uh, <laughs> in addition, I could just play this. It's a pretty good card, right? So here's something really interesting. Uh, my good friend Tom Martell just won a Grand Prix with, um, I guess, the functionality Ling of like Ling Soul. these six cards in my deck. It's important to understand these six cards in my deck do everything in Tom's deck. <laughs> everything Tom's deck was designed to do, these six cards, okay? I still have a turn two kill in all my other cards. There's like, oh, he had a counter spell, he had like some spell snare, whatever. I have, I have Cabal Therapy, it's the same, right? <laughs> so here's something. No, he had Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls is a very powerful card. It's pretty, pretty good. Might not notice this. Say somebody wants to make you slow play, right? Or you get like a really awkward draw. I can just target these two and flip over free 1-1 one -one flyers, just like Lingering Souls, and then I can throw stuff on them and attack you in the red zone. <laughs> I've won innumerable games with like a Shuko Enhanced Narco Amoeba to the jaw that finished with uh, Vile Out, Murderous Red Cap to your face, Flashback, Cabal Therapy, take one. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's happened. So the entire functionality of what most people think of as the best deck in Legacy takes up six cards in my turn two combo kill. But wait, there's more. I there's actually, a sideboard. There's actually a sideboard. <laughs> I actually already figured out Lingering Souls by myself before it, <laughs> before it won. So I actually played way more Lingering Souls before. Until so actually, I, I play Tessas a lot. People play a lot of, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, uh, Leyline of the Void. So oh. Lingering Souls is like way less good when people, people have Leyline of the Void. Mm -hmm. So I still played one because it's awesome. But the other thing is like, you can flip over Lingering Souls for free and then just get free flashies. Or you can use it to flash back your flashback card. So you have these, these free tokens. You have like A, you have an army, B, you can you can do that. Now, here's this, I have this card and I have all these hate bears, right? So this is the weirdest card. You probably have to read this, Stern right. Proctor. It's like a mana so war for- uh, It's a mana war for or whatever or thing they thought they were gonna beat you with. So you're like, I'm just gonna cast this, you lose, okay? Um, and it costs zero mana. That's, that's, that's one thing that's cool. Here's the other thing. Say your opponent has like a Knight of the Reliquary and 14 scavenging oozes in play. All you have to do is cast this card. Cast this card and you're like, I'll pay like five life because your opponent cannot actually try to kill you or you will kill him. So, so he has to slow play. So I do is I cast this, find this card. Want to want, ooh, where did it go? <laughs> well, I have another copy. Well, so you well. find this card. <laughs> you just cast this card and your opponent loses on the spot. Why? Because he doesn't have force of will. So you cast this card and he says, it resolves. Now he can take no actions. So he has a Knight of the Reliquary and 14 scavenging oozes in play. And I just go this and this. And they're like, I also have th 365 Pad to Exiles. Like, but you can't cast anything or activate any of your utility creatures because I cast this unsung card from the set Weatherlight. Brian <laughs> Weissman taught me to play it. So, and then you just kill them. So, like, you could just cast this, this key, this beats half the sideboard cards, this beats uh, all the sideboard cards except for Grafstigger's Cage, and then, or, if your opponent's like, really wants to be clever, you could just, like, put in a sword and do this, uh, and this, and you already have a baseline set of creatures. You're just actually just better than, <laughs> you're better at all the things that, like, the fair decks try to do than they are because your cards are both free and uncounterable. So, so it's like the mirror match, except for you do twice as many things with half as much land. And then also, if they ever screw up, you kill them. So, so, so what's, I, I'm afraid to ask is, what, what don't you want to see? What deck uh, don't so you want to see? So I've only ever lost like these really weird things. Like, so you just don't want to see any rogue decks? No, it's like, 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 like corner case situations where you know what cards your opponent have in their deck, but then they just draw them. And they're like, like they've cast no manipulations and they're like, oh, I randomly have my one crucible of worlds uh, a wasteland, a mox, and Liliana on the second turn. You're like, well, I could guess I could still maybe win. No, wait, I also drew him to Torok. Like, I mean, this is no fun. Like, they didn't do anything special. Like, like they're just like, oh, I drew some cards. Or like, you know what card is annoying? Uh, ze zealots, something. It's like black, white, plus ones and minus ones. That zealots kills like everything yeah. everywhere. So, so like, that's, that's, that's bad. I don't want, I don't want them to kill it. So you just don't want to lose to variants, is basically. Like, I mean, you don't I, want to face variants. My, my deck is super fast. Uh, actually, um, this was a like, Matt Sperling suggested I play this on Twitter like months ago. Yeah. And I tried uh, it. Uh, so here's the secret of this deck. What does this deck not have, Joey? Uh, Let's pretend that these cards everything. don't actually Intuition? have. These cards don't have a mana cost. Now pretend. What does this deck not? have? Green mana, right? Oh, oh so yeah, I wasn't all about that. Er earlier versions of this deck that were played in Legacy play cards like Worldly Tutor, Eldamry's Call, and Living Wish, which is stuff that people Can name when they cast count, cards yeah. like, <laughs> like, Cabal Therapy, you name Worldly Tutor. Like, 
yeah, great, brah. <laughs> Not in my deck. Um, so, uh, where is it? Lindell's Fault does everything all these cards want to do, and it also is pitch eligible for Force of Will. Um, it could get any kind of sideboard card, and in fact, if you pay enough life, you can actually like ensure that you'll win the next turn. If you have enough, you're just like, I just keep paying a lot of life. You fix the top card, the top of your deck, you have a hand, and then you're like, ding, 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 cast a brainstorm, and uh, if you have enough mana, your opponent's just basically nothing they can do. If they're, if they're, I mean, let's see, I got a burn deck maybe. Like I don't know, I didn't test right. against that. I mean, I have like <laughs> Batter Skull, Jide. Like this card's think, pretty bad against I a burn deck. Uh, <laughs> I think you're pretty well set. This is really interesting. I, I can't wait to see this on camera. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get you on there. But uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for sharing your ridiculous deck. Like so, I, I actually, I hope it'll be, it'll be successful. It's I, like I hope so super too. Super fun, it and really it, fun. It, its potential is high. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's Mike Flores. This is his crazy innovation to uh, to we'll call it, breakfast. We'll call it Innovator Breakfast. Innovator Breakfast. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'm Joey Pasco here at the StarCityGames.com Invitational. We'll be back later with some more deck techs.